Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and iOS 15.7.1 released to the public today. This is available to all iOS 15 supported devices around the world at the exact same time. So if you have an iPhone 6s, 6s plus all the way up to the iPhone 13 pro and 13 pro max, and you never upgraded to iOS 16 on those supported devices, you'll actually have an update there as well. And as you can see on the iPhone SE two that I have here, if we check for an update, this is already updated to 15.7. 7.1. I had that option, but I could also upgrade to iOS 16. So you'll have both options on a device that's not yet on iOS 16, all the way up to the 13 Pro Max. iPad OS 15.7.1 was released at the same time, and the same is true. You have the same supported devices, and if you never upgraded to iPad OS 16, you'll have the option for iPad OS 6.15.7.1. Now this came in at 621.4 megabytes on the 6s plus and was about the same size on all the devices. This was on 15.7. It could vary depending on which device you're actually upgrading from and also what version you're upgrading from. Apple also released iOS 16.2 public beta one today, along with Mac OS 13.1 public beta one. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the build number and talk about what's new. So we'll go to settings, then general, then about, you can see the build number is 19 H 117. And this is not the same build as iOS 15.7.1 release candidate. So if you were beta testing that version, uninstall the beta profile, and then you'll be able to update to this version. You should see a new build and then you'll have 15.7.1. If you want to use that on your device, there's also a modem update in this version. So if you were having connectivity, issues. It could be anything from the 6s plus all the way up to the 13 pro max. There should be a modem update for all of those. I saw one on the 6s plus for me, so no issues there. And also people have actually confirmed they were having issues with face ID. So if you had a face ID phone on 15.7.1 and you were using the release candidate, that seems to be resolved. And that makes sense as we have a new build number. Now, as far as new features, this is more of a bug fix and security update. So don't expect any major feature changes or updates there. You're mostly going to have bug fixes, whether that be smoothness or apps crashing, those things should be resolved. As far as cellular connectivity is with Wi-Fi. Bluetooth and more. Those are the things they're actually repairing, but they haven't said specifically what they're fixing, but I can show you the security updates. But I did want to mention one more thing is that I actually tried to downgrade my iPhone 11 and iPhone 10 R using a computer from iOS 16 down to iOS 15.7.1 and got an error message that I was unable to do so. This error message typically appears when they won't let you do it. It says the iPhone 11 could not be updated, declined to authorize this image on this device for this user. I tried to restore. I tried to update. I tried multiple ways. I couldn't get it to downgrade. However, some third party apps will let you do that. So I'll continue to try it. And if you're interested in a second video, maybe on how to downgrade to the latest version, let me know in the comments below. Now bug fixes, like I said, were a major part of this, but security updates are the number one reason they release this. So if we go to the Apple security website and we scroll down, you'll see that we have iOS 15.7.1 and iPad OS 15.7.1. If we go into that, scroll down, there's quite a few fixes here for the Apple neural engine, audio, backup, FaceTime, graphics drivers, image processing, kernel, and then also, and that's sort of the underlying code of the OS, we have model IO or input output, PPP, Safari, WebKit, Wi-Fi, and Z library. And so if we go to one of these, I've shown this in other videos, but if you want to see how to actually read this for graphics driver, the impact or the problem was an app may be able to execute arbitrary code with kernel privileges. The description or the fix is the issue was addressed with improved bounds checking. And then they actually give credit for who submitted the problem and maybe the fix with the CVE number. And that's true of any of these. So there's quite a few things that I would definitely recommend upgrading. So if you were wondering if you should install this update, I would definitely upgrade just for those reasons alone with the security updates. You don't have to go to iOS 16 if your device supports it, but definitely go to 15.7.1 to keep your device secure. And the security updates don't stop with this update. If you didn't notice the other day, there was also a Mac OS Big Sur and Monterey update. So Mac OS Big Sur 11.7.1 and Mac OS Monterey 12.6. 6.1. So you don't have to go to Ventura, even if your device supports it as well. So those things are available. 
as far as performance using this during this time, it seems to be nice and fast or really the same as it was before. So scrolling through different things, if you're just scrolling, this is a 6s plus, of course, it's not the latest phone, but let's go into music. We'll have it reload here over Wi-Fi. Give it just a moment and could be my Wi-Fi, could be this device. There we go. You'll see scrolling is okay, even though it's still filling in information. So that's a good sign, no issues there. And let's go ahead and open up Minecraft and see how it goes. So we'll give it just a second. Give it a moment to load here and see what it's doing. And one thing to note, we'll talk about in a moment is the heat of the device, which is a good thing. So we'll wait for this to load here. I haven't loaded this on an older device for a while. Hit create new, create new, create. And I usually tend to check this for frame rate issues. So again, let's give it a second to load. It's building terrain. Now it took just a moment to load and it didn't take any excessive amount of time to load. So it looks like it's nice and smooth. It's actually performing better than I showed with 16.2 betas. So that's good news. It's nice and smooth there. The phone is getting a little bit warm when playing a game. That's to be expected. The processor has to work harder, so it's going to warm up a little bit, but nothing different than what I would expect before. So that's good news. Everything seems to be smooth and fast. Battery life takes a few days to measure. So this has only been updated for an hour or so. There's no way to really tell for sure, but it takes a few days to measure. And if you want me to mention that in my follow-up video this weekend, I will. Now, as far as other future updates, well, iOS 16.1's follow-up will be this weekend, and then iOS 16.1.1 could possibly release for newer devices to fix issues with Wi-Fi. So there's been some issues with Wi-Fi dropping there. Maybe we'll see a 16.1.1, and then 16.2 betas continue. Those are currently out, and let's see what I did with my calendar here. Those betas are currently out and it looks like I may have deleted it. So if we go over to another device here, you'll see, you'll see if we go to next week, I wouldn't really expect iOS 16.2 beta two this coming week, probably the week after. However, Apple could always surprise us with a different update at that point. Of course, we have new iPads and everything else. It's been a very busy week with updates and device updates as well, but there's not a whole lot more to talk about with 15.7.1. I would go ahead and update it. And if you found anything else I haven't mentioned in this video, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. Of course, if you'd like to get your hands on this wallpaper, I'll link it in the description like I normally do. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As as always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.